Satan is what I call a personal devil. Satan doesn't want to condemn the world. Satan wants to condemn you. And 2 Corinthians chapter 11 tells us that he will uh, masquerade himself as an angel of light. In, in other words, he's very good at looking uh, good, looking uh, like something that we might want to follow. He will take a half-truth and, and mix it in with his lies so that we think we're following God, so that we think we're doing the right thing. But in the middle of it, he masquerades himself as that angel of light and tricks us. And so today, what I want to look at out of Nehemiah chapter 6 is how Satan tried to do that to Nehemiah and look at principles from his leadership in his life and talk about how that is going to help us when Satan tries to tempt us and test us through being an angel of light. So let me give you the context of Nehemiah chapter 6. The wall has been built. It's been completed. Now they're putting up the gates and they're needing to put some iron on the gates uh, so that they cannot be burned and catch fire uh, by their enemies. And so they're wrapping up the wall. And so Satan is going to attack one last time before they finish the wall. But this attack is going to be more of an attack of an angel of light. Let's watch and see what happens here. Beginning in 6-1. When Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem, the Arab, and the rest of our enemies found out that I had finished rebuilding the wall and that no gaps remained, Though we had not yet hung the doors and the gates, Sanballat and Geshem sent me a message asking me to meet them at one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But I realized they were plotting to harm me, so I replied by sending this message to them, I am doing great work. I cannot stop to come and meet with you. Four times they sent the same reply, and each time I gave the same reply. So this is the last attempt of Sanballat and Tobiah to try to stop Nehemiah from finishing the wall. The wall is completed. All they have to do is put up the gates. And so they sent this nice message saying, Nehemiah, we want to get to know you. Why don't you just stop your work and come out here and let's just talk. Let's just spend some time together. Let's go on a little retreat and get away. But Nehemiah knew their motives. He knew that their motives were to stop the work, potentially to get him out there away from the people and harm him. We don't know exactly what they were planning, but he knew this was their last attempt to stop the wall before it was completed. And so four times they offer him an invitation to come to them to a retreat, to a meeting, maybe a peacekeeping meeting. And four times Nehemiah says, no, I'm not buying your line. I'm not going because he understood the power of distraction. Now this is the first thing Satan does as an angel of light to try to keep us from realizing our maximum capacity as people, and that is distraction. I'm sure you've heard about this before, but God has called us to the very best. He wants us to be excellent in all that we do. He, he has a great vision for our lives. So here's what Satan does. Satan masquerades as an angel of light, and he puts a lot of pretty good opportunities in front of us, knowing that if we will just settle for the pretty good opportunities, that we'll be distracted by busyness, that we'll be distracted by opportunities that aren't the best opportunities, that we'll miss out on the best that God has for us. And it will minimize our impact in this world because we're too busy being distracted by a few good things that have minimal impact so that the thing that can give us maximum impact we're not doing because we're too busy doing the things with minimal impact. It is a classic angel of light move of the enemy. And we have to pay attention to that in our lives. What has God called you to do? What has He called you to do? What does He want you to do with your life on this day to make a difference in the world? Whatever that is, I want you to know that Satan is working behind the scenes to put some other things in your way to get you distracted, to get you too busy doing mundane things so that you're not maximizing your impact doing great things for God. So I don't know what those things are for you, but I know in Nehemiah's life, what Nehemiah realized is this is a distraction. They're wanting to be, quote, friends with me. All that's going to do is take me away from the maximum impact of rebuilding this wall. I'm not going to be deceived by the enemy by being distracted and stopping building the wall to do something that has less impact. You need to do the same thing in your life. What does that mean? That means you've got to sit down and prioritize your life. You've got to figure out exactly what God wants you to do, 
why he wants you to do it, and you have to stay on task. And then you have to know every day there's going to be these things pop up here and there. Satan's going to pop those up to try to get you off focus, to get you doing minimally important things so that you're not maximizing what God has for you for the day. And so that's one of the ways Satan, the angel of light, um, tries to get us to minimize our impact. So look at your life. One of the things I want you to do out of this is look at your life. Where is your maximum impact? Don't let Satan distract you from that. Don't get busy doing other things. Stay focused like Nehemiah did. Say no to the average things and the good things so you can say yes to the best things. Wonderful, wonderful leadership tip from Nehemiah. So let's read on, beginning in verse 5. The fifth time... Sanballat's servant came with an open letter in his hand. Now the key phrase here is an open letter in his hand. Usually what they would do is they would take a letter and they would roll the letter up and place it in a silk bag to ensure privacy. So if I wanted to send you a letter, you would get the letter, it would be rolled up in this bag and I would give it to you. That way you can read it in privacy, no one else sees it. Well that's not what they did. They left an open letter for everyone to hear so that everyone would know what the letter said. And here's what the letter said. Geshem tells me that everywhere he goes, he hears that you and the Jews are planning to rebel, and that's why you are building the wall. So here's the second move of the angel of light, Satan, to try to destroy uh, God's people, and that is the rumor mill. Okay, now the first rumor is this. You know what? We heard that you're building this wall because you're planning a rebellion against King Artaxerxes. Now remember, Nehemiah was very close to the king. He was his cupbearer, right? And the king said, you can go for a while, but I really need you to come back. The king loved Nehemiah. So now they're starting this rumor mill. You know what? We're hearing that you're actually planning a revolt against the king. You're planning a rebellion against the king. You used him, and now you're going to build this wall and start this rebellion. Boy, I sure hope that doesn't get back to the king. So they're trying to scare Nehemiah by these rumors. According to his reports, you plan to be their king. In other words, we have King Artaxerxes. You're going to break away from Babylon. You're going to start Judah to be its own nation again, and you're going to be king. You're, you're power and control hungry, and you're trying to, to usurp the authority of the king, the mighty king, and that's what you're doing. More rumors. He also reports that you have appointed prophets to prophesy about you in Jerusalem, saying, Look, there is a king in Judah. You can be very sure that this report will get back to the king, so I just suggest that you come and talk it over with me. So this third rumor is, oh, not only are you going to be king and lead this revolt, but you're actually paying off prophets to prophesy this is what's supposed to happen so these poor, weak Jewish people will follow you out of a, a, a respect for the prophecy of God. You're paying this prophet off to do this. And you can be sure it's going to get back to the king. That's why we're wanting to meet with you, Nehemiah, because we care so much about you and we just love you so much. We would hate for these horrible rumors to get back to the king. So you better stop building the wall and come meet with us. So they're starting this rumor mill. Of course, these rumors, if they got back to the king and the king believed them, Nehemiah would be killed, right? The, the, the Babylonian king would just send his forces and wipe out Judah. And so they're very, very serious accusations and serious rumors that could be devastating to Nehemiah. But notice, Nehemiah doesn't play their game. He refuses to meet with them. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about Satan, the angel of light. Rumors are absolutely destructive to people. They can kill people. And Satan is behind the rumor mill. The rumor mill is never from God. God is about truth. God is about respecting people. And Satan loves to start rumors about people because rumors, even if they're not true, even if they have no element of truth at all, people will believe them. People are quick to pass them on. And I have watched so many people get destroyed by wicked rumors that simply weren't true. That is one of the tactics of Satan disguising himself as an angel of light. Telling stories that aren't true, rumors that destroy people. A huge tactic of the enemy. And you know what, as leaders, 
we're going to have to address rumors sometimes. People are just going to spread things about us. It's happened to me, I'm sure it's happened to you, where people say negative things behind our backs that aren't true, and then those things start to get out. Well, watch how Nehemiah responds, because this is a way a leader handles uh, the rumor mill. My reply was, you know you are lying. There is no truth to any part of your story. So the first thing I want you to notice is, Nehemiah did defend himself. He de did defend himself. Now, he didn't go to great lengths to defend himself. That doesn't mean people didn't believe the lies and the rumors. But Nehemiah did take the time to defend himself. And, and there's a balance here uh, for a leader, I think. I, I think we can defend ourselves, but I don't think we waste a lot of time and energy trying to defend ourselves. Because reality is people are going to believe what they're going to believe. And if we're living lives of character, if we're living lives that are trustworthy, if we're living lives that, that, that represent the character of God, over time our character will override the rumor mill. That's what I found. So can you defend yourself? Yes, Nehemiah did. But here's the key. You don't over defend yourself. I had a wise pastor tell me early on in my ministry, uh, he was being attacked and attacked and attacked for a stance that he had taken on a particular issue. And, and I asked him, I said, you don't seem to be attacking back. Why aren't you attacking back? And he said, Brad, never forget this. You can't out puke a buzzard in a puking contest. <laughs> the guy was from Georgia. And I think that's such a vivid, vivid way of describing this. And I think it's so true. Listen, if someone is a buzzard, you, you, can't, you can't enter their game of wickedness and rumor uh, and, and, and uh, being ugly and, and being divisive. You, you don't want to enter that game. You don't want to stoop to their level. You can't outpuke a buzzer in a puking contest. So what do you do? Defend yourself briefly and then move on. And that's exactly what Nehemiah did. He said, they were just trying to intimidate us, imagining that they could break our resolve and stop the work. So I prayed for strength to continue the work. And so what's the second thing Nehemiah did? Well, he took it to God, right? Because God is God over everything. God can stop the rumor mill. God always brings truth to light over time. And so there may be rumors flying around right now, and you may think, man, people are going to think I'm awful. But you know what I found? God always vindicates His servants. God always brings truth to light. And at some point down the road, people will know the truth. And, and I have watched it over and over again where a leader gets attacked, the rumor mill is active, and then later on people will come back and apologize and say, you know what, we, we got caught up in that. We believed things that weren't true because God brings the truth to light over time. So what did Nehemiah do? He briefly said, you know what, it's not true. Then he prayed to God and continued to work. He finished the wall in this chapter. And so I think that's a great, great response to the rumor mill if you're a leader. Okay? Defend yourself briefly. Pray to God that God brings truth to light. Pray for your enemies. Pray for those people that are spreading rumors about you. And then just continue to do your work. Your life will speak for itself. Your character will speak for itself. The truth will win out. And that's what we do with the rumor mill, which is the second uh, one of these, these tactics that the angel of light uses to try to destroy the people of God. And the third one then is this, deception. Deception. Later, I went to visit Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the grandson of Meta, uh, Meha Tabal, who was confined to his home. He said, let us meet together inside the temple of God and bolt the doors shut. Your enemies are coming to kill you tonight. But I replied, should someone in my position run away from danger? Should someone in my position enter the temple to save his life? No, I won't do it. I realized that God had not spoken to him, but that he had uttered this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. So remember, Tobiah and Sanballat had accused Nehemiah of hiring prophets to, to have this prophecy to get the people to follow him. And yet, that's exactly what Tobiah and Sanballat did to this prophet. They hired him for a false prophecy to try to get Nehemiah to sin. They were hoping to intimidate me and make me sin by following his suggestion. Then they would be able to accuse and discredit me. Remember all, oh my God, all the evil things that Tobiah and Sanballat have done. And remember uh, Noadiah the prophet and all the prophets like her who have tried to intimidate me. So here's what they did. This, this last 
uh, angel of light move was just out and out deception. They paid this prophet to say, hey, Nehemiah, come here, I need to talk to you. Listen, they're going to come kill you tonight. You need to run. You need to run and you need to hide. And you need to hide in the temple with me and I'll keep you safe. Well, the only place to hide in the temple to, behind the locked door, like he mentioned, was in the holy place. And only the priest could enter the holy place. So Nehemiah would be sinning. He would be breaking the law of Moses by going into the holy place and hiding from these people. And so then they could come out, then his enemies can come out and discredit him and accuse him of sinning and accuse him of being a coward and running for his life and try to hurt his reputation and his ability to lead the people. And so they were lying. They, they were setting him up. And Nehemiah refused to take the bait. Why? Because he knew God. He knew what God wanted. And so when the angel of light came and made the, the lie look like truth, Nehemiah caught on and didn't fall for it. That's what the angel of light does, is he takes a lie, he makes it look like truth, and if we don't know the Word of God well, if we don't know the nature of God well, if we don't know the character of God well, we will end up falling prey to some of the lies of the enemy because they look so much like truth. And we'll end up sinning, we'll end up getting ourselves in places that will discredit our leadership. Why? Because we weren't paying attention enough. We didn't know the Word of God enough to be able to tell the lie of the enemy from the truth of God. So that's what, that's what the enemy does. That's what the enemy does, is he will lie to us, he will spread rumors about us, he will distract us, anything he can do to minimize our impact and our leadership. So I just want you to think about this chapter, okay? The enemy comes in. He sits and try so hard to distract Nehemiah. Does he try to distract us? Absolutely. Then he starts rumors against Nehemiah. Does he start rumors against us? Listen, if you're doing something good for God, you're going to end up dealing with a rumor mill of people who don't like what you're doing spreading rumors about you. And then finally, he just out and out tries to deceive us. Satan is the deceiver. He's the liar. And that is his primary uh, tactic, is the lie but He makes it look like truth. So if we're not ready, if we're not tuned into God, we can easily be deceived by the enemy. That's how the angel of light works. Look how this chapter ends. On October 2nd, the wall finally finished, just 52 days after we had begun. 52 days they rebuilt that wall. Is that not amazing? When our enemies and the surrounding nations heard about it, they were frightened and humiliated they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. You know how you make a fool of your enemies? You finish what God's asked you to do. Because at the end of the day, they will be terrified, they will be frightened because they will see God is in it. But be careful, because as you're leading, there's going to be lies around you, trying to deceive you, there's going to be rumors around you, trying to discourage you and cause you to give up, or to just spend all your energy trying to fight the rumors instead of doing the right thing. And there's going to be all sorts of distractions to keep you from doing the best things you can do for God. So as a leader, as a leader, you have to have discernment. You have to have discernment to fight the angel of light. The discernment for the distractions so you don't go there. The discernment for the rumors so you can let them go and continue to work for God. And the discernment to tell the lies from the truth so you can stand in the truth and finish the job God has asked you to do. Don't be one of those believers that doesn't finish the job, that doesn't maximize what God's called you to because you don't have the discernment to see the distractions, the rumors, and then of course, the deception. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this teaching. Thank you for every man and woman that's watching this video right now. Lord, I pray that we will be your leaders, that we will know exactly what you want us to do and that we will not be distracted, that we will not give in to rumors. And Lord, that we will be able to see the deception of the enemy and stand for truth. Give us that discernment through your Holy Spirit, O oh God. In Jesus' name. 
If you like what you've heard today, uh, I would invite you to go over to my website, uh, embarkmen.com. Look around the website. We also have a place there where you can donate. Uh, this is a nonprofit ministry, and uh, we make our living through donations of our, our watchers and our hearers. And so if you would do that for me, I would greatly appreciate it. God bless you. Have a good day.